All right, hey, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Squawking 1200. Uh, getting ready to uh, put the headset on. I'm not sure how the chat is going to work out today. Um, we're going to be working in the uh, Karen Auto 152 version 2, Cessna 152 within the Hadrian Mod 4.1. Uh, it's got the moving engine parts, it has um, new touch points, um, it has different uh, teleportation spots. Uh, I'm going to pop the um, chat into the headset, and I don't know if it's going to follow me around. Um, so that will be the, that's going to be the question. Is the chat going to be able to go with me or is it going to just kind of float where I leave it and be aggravating? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in move VR, manage window, Word. Twitch. All right. Got the chat. So if you're uh, in the chat, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> we are sitting inside the Cessna 152. We're going to lower the flaps. I'm going to attempt to do a somewhat, a somewhat proper uh, walk around. I'm not a pilot, so I don't know, um, and I don't have a checklist with me that I'm able to um, kind of float within the headset to view. Uh, so that's going to be some of the tricky stuff. So I think I'm going to throw you out the door, and I'm going to get out the door. I'm going to go down the wheel. We're outside the wheel. All right. See, I already lost my chat. Let me try that again. Chat is going to be the tricky thing on this. So if I'm not getting to your questions, it says the window is in VR already. Where in VR, we don't know. I'm going to go back inside the cockpit for a second. Nope, not sure where it is. All right. So what I'm going to do, let's say next is move VR move VR manage windows and turn it off and maybe restart it. Let's see if that changes anything. So it says it's in VR. I'm going to jump out of the headset for a second. Pop it out. Dark mode, check. Uh, that was bad. Pop it out. Dark mode. Alright, what I'm going to have to do, I think I'm going to have to periodically look into, um, look back and find it in the chat. Um, I don't know if move VR, if I toggle it through X-Plane there. If that'll work any better for me. Let me see if I can. Nope, didn't help. So, Twitch. Nope. No, 
not that one. This one. Best move in the VR. All right, so I sort of have it. I'm not confident in this thing at all, the way it is, so I'm just going to start walking. Uh, maybe I'll just leave this inside the cockpit. It's a little bit fuzzy for me, and I'm not sure why, so it's actually uh, nearly impossible to read. Hmm. <laughs> what to do, what to do. Yeah, the, that looks awful. Horrible, horrible, awful. Gonna try this way. Dark mode, pop out. And shrink the chat. Get rid of this one. All right. So what, what I'm going to say is I'm, I'm going to say save your questions for later. Put the flaps down. Um, and before we put the do that, I'm going to make I'm going to do a quick light check. So I'm going to go out. And you're going to watch me just get dizzy. We're going to pretend that's operating. The beacon light is definitely working. We're going to say this one's working. Come around to the front. We're going to say the landing light's good. We're going to touch the pedo. The pedo is warm. And we're going to get back inside the aircraft. We're going to power down the switches. So I'm going to get back outside the aircraft. We're going to follow along the empennage. We're going to inspect as we go. Checking it all out. We're going to go to position number three, I believe, or two. We're going to check. We're going to check. We're going to check on that side. Good. Everything's looking good. We're going to go back on this side. Again, inspecting the aircraft, checking the wires, checking the antennas. Let me go give that antenna a little touchy touch. Sorry about the microphone smack right there. Gonna look at the tires and the struts. Those look good from back here. They look in alignment. Nothing looks off. Gonna touch. Gonna look up and underneath. We can see all those are good. All right, getting turned around. You guys are gonna be able to laugh at me. I practiced this. I did one walkthrough once. Good. Ailerons. You know, checking the lenses, make sure the lights were on, that they weren't cracked. <clears throat> Coming around to the front. Checking along the edge, the leading edge of the wing. That all looks good. Again, looking at the tires, everything, the plane looks balanced. Nothing looks like it's leaning. Gonna get a little closer here. Now we can see the inside of the engine. We can inspect the exhaust, looks good. We're going to get up on the wing. We're going to add fuel. Um, I didn't see a way to add fuel through a VR. Um, I was trying to see if this would go up or down the fuel stick. Oh, it does touch. Okay, so cool, cool. Seven gallons. We're going to ride this all the way up. Put that back down. We're going to get back off the aircraft. Hopefully the audio is okay and everything sounds good. I'm going to come back out in front here. We're going to check the oil in the oil. We're going to come around in the front of the airplane. We're going to check the strut. We're going to check the spinners, the propeller. We're going to just do a visual, uh, make sure there's no debris inside, inside the openings of the air intakes. 
put the cover back on. We're going to, let's see, these are the touch zones, right? These are the specialty ones. So now we can be up here on top of the engine. Super cool, you get to see all the different parts. And what I really, one of the things that I really like, let me get it off of here, is this. So here, instead of having the little slide out tab, you have all your little selectable things right here. You can have the roof windows open, closed. So you have the Aerobat edition. Cool. Put the static elements on right here. Pedo cover. Take those off. You can add the wheel fairings if you want. Um, personal preference, no. You're going to leave the 530 as the GPS. You can do your weight and bags right there. Fuel tanks are full. Uh, window reflections on or off. Um, if you want the Nahadrian version of the iPad or the Avitab version. And if you want the Info heads up display, which will be displayed inside. Um, so we're going to back over here. Put the cover back on. Well, I'm so getting disoriented in my room. Um, we're going to check the stall warning. Yep, that's annoying enough. Uh, we're going to go back up on here. Gonna, oh, sorry about the microphone punch there. <laughs> Just because you see how much more room I need in my playroom here. All right, we've got the same amount of fuel on both sides. That's good. We're going to get down. We're going to finish inspecting the leading edge of the wing, the wing struts. Um, no differentiation in, in the tires from here. Everything looks great. Checking the lights again. Um, you know, you want to make sure it's not cracked, not missing, make sure it's working. I'm going to come back to the this side of the aircraft. We're going to check our ailerons and our flaps. Go underneath, check the, check the connections, make sure that's all set. Take a quick look at the tire and brakes, good. We're going to jump back in and rotate myself. So here is the uh, the heads up display, super cool, huh? Looks like you'll be able to uh, move that to where we want it. Let's see, what I'm going to do at this point before we uh, do too much more. That was kind of the exterior walk around. Um, we got to see the inside of the engine. So what we're going to do, we're going to fire this thing up really quick. Move the flaps back up. So you can see the uh, the wind, the heading, the air pressure, date and time, temperature, eleven feet above uh, mean sea level. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a walk out. And in there you can see the moving engine components. I was able to earlier stick my head in there. You know. Yeah, yeah here we go. go. Okay, got, got the little, little cutaway down, down here. here. Got the full engine. Everything's, Everything's moving. moving. Looks good. I'm just gonna get, get myself, myself back into, into the cockpit. Shut, shut the door. door. Uh, and the, the noise dampens. dampens. It's an excellent thing. thing. Now I'm gonna turn that on. Lights are on. All right, we're, we're pretty, pretty much, much prepped for takeoff. Next, Next thing I'm going to do, we're just going to do a little bit of a... I'm just going to fly around a little bit here. Not going, going too far. far. Just, just a quick... Um, 
demonstration of how cool this is. Alright. Alright, I'm back in the chat there so I can see some of that. A couple of the other little improvements. Um, I wouldn't call these actually little improvements. I call them pretty... Uh, the graphics have been improved. He's got uh, pilotacademia.hu.hungry. Um, hey Al, how you doing today? I'm doing a little bit of uh, just kind of a demonstration of the uh, new updated Nehadrian mod for the Carinata 152 version 2. Um, so some of the cool features, you got this new heads-up display that you can adjust that features all your critical uh, information. Uh, that's pretty high-tech for a 152. I'm having a hard time reading the text in this. Let me see if that... There we go. Uh, no economy, just doing a... Just a little more on the demonstration. Um, inside the glove box of this, instead of having a hula girl, or a Hula Austin, you have GoPro cameras. And in 2D, you can touch the GoPro cameras and it will change your view. I think there's four of them. Front, back, left wing, and on the tail. Pretty fun. The heads up display is new. And I think, can we just It does have some kind of switch. Seems like it inverts the colors, maybe. Um, what other things? Uh, the moving engine components are super cool. So now you can do a theoretical full walk around that I just did. Um, the difficult part is having the checklist. Um, I I did try the checklist and I tried the chat and as I'd walk around it would just get lost. Uh, so let's just go do a couple laps. I don't think the flight dynamics have changed. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is really cool. It's got a full checklist that automatically fills up in VR. This is page back top is page forward page forward where is page one page seven all right here we go Checked all that. Right wing tie downs good under carriage. We checked the tires. We checked the fuel zone. We checked the fuel quantity on the roof, which is really uh, that's a pretty cool feature of this aircraft. We checked the lights. We looked at the windshield. It was clean, not cracked. Air air filter was unobstructed. The wheel struts were good. The chocks were not on the static port. Um, I didn't see the static port on this. I think it's on this left side. Uh, tie downs, check. We did the same thing on the left side. Check the pitot tube. Before starting engine. Passenger briefing. We're just flying around a little bit. Seats are adjusted and comfortable. Doors are closed. Parking brake is off and set. And we can just give it a little test. All right, holds nicely. We've started the engine. Key, prop. 
Actually, looking through, I think I did uh, pretty well on the checklist kind of going by memory. Engine run up. All right, see, the wind is coming from 309. That means we probably want runway 34, which is on the, is the runway we're facing. So let's taxi down there. We'll get to our run up. I'm a little bit more juddery than normal. Everything's steering well, um, gauges are moving. Perfect. Taxing a little too fast here. We are at um, Romeo November Tango in Washington State. Get this uh, airport from the .org uh, freeware donationware. This heads-up display is crazy cool looking. You're not going to get that in a jet. Maybe a fighter jet. So taxing pretty nice here. The time is accurate according to the uh, clock in the aircraft. So I'm going to come up to the run up area up on the left. Should center myself a little bit more. But I think this versus the uh, Just Flight, this aircraft is amazing. Why am I having so much trouble right now? A little bit. A uh, little bit sensitive there on that ground control. I have a feeling the wind is changing direction wildly right now. Alright, here we are in the run-up area. Yeah, we're on the wrong end of the runway, technically. Oh well. So we'll do a quick run-up, see how, it, how everything reacts here. Mixture rich. And this says go to, doesn't give an, an RPM recommendation. So I'm going to go up to like 1800. Good, small drops back here. Uh, lighting set for departure. See now the flag just looks like it just flipped. I could swear if I watched the video it was aiming towards us. Checking left, right, center. Nobody coming out from these hangers on our right. We're gonna do we're gonna do a straight out departure, uh, and then head out to the north a little bit. So let's see, before takeoff, throttle friction adjusted. I'm going to throw the brake on for a second. Seatbelts are good. Doors and windows are closed and latched. Flaps are up. Carburetor heat is off. Fuel selector is on. 
transponder set to altimeter, altitude, alt mode. Landing lights are on, radio broadcast intentions, uh, Cessna Type 152, departing runway 36. I think I'm at 36. No, 34, I think it is. Set runway heading, position to the wind. Note takeoff time in log, it'll be 9 11, 9 10. Runway lines up the compass three four perfect check. They advance the throttle slowly and smoothly. Winds coming from one hundred, so almost coming from behind us again. It's crazy variable. This may lengthen the takeoff roll. Full throttle, airspeed's coming alive. 50 and rotate. And we're off with the. We're off in the Karenado 152 version 2 with the Hadrian Mod 4.1. Let's see. Climb out. Seventy. Climbing out exactly seventy. Perfect. In route climb will be seventy-five. And landing light off. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make a little... <clears throat> Ooh, what do we want to do? Mm. I want to keep this this particular video on the short side. So I think we're, we're going to do... We're just going to head over to Boeing Field right there. So the wind is a direct right crosswind. I will just go over to Boeing Field. We'll just set it down. Using real weather and ortho scenery. There is a super short runway at Boeing Field. It's uh, the right-hand runway. We're going to take that one. Get this thing starting to lower down. Pre-landing checklist. Whoa, that was a big gust of wind right there. getting blasted in this direction. There we go. Yeah, that little runway way over there. <clears throat> All right, place your bets, everyone. <clears throat> it's 
Still coming a little fast. Gonna go second notch of flaps, confirmed. And confirmed. There's no wind suck at this end of the field here. I feel like I'm weather vanning pretty heavy to the left. Which would be what the heads up display says. Ooh. All right. Oh yeah, I see why. 13, 14 knots gusting. Wow, back down to 7. 13, 12, 7. So it's between 7 and say 13. There's another gust. So I think this is going to be the... It's going to be pretty tricky. Feel pretty good on the height. Wow, getting blown all over the place here. Gonna need a little more speed coming in here. I'm gonna push that nose to the right. I'm gonna try to drop that left. Whoa, we're floating. Hang on. There we go. It feels a little better. Whoa, big updraft right there. Going around. Wind just kicked way up to 15. It's coming from 285. Not quite a direct crosswind, but definitely coming from, say, 10 o'clock. Going around. We're gonna make a left traffic. Uh, we're gonna make right traffic here. Doesn't seem like it would make sense to cross over the other runway. Wow, what a push! Nobody in the pattern. Feel like we're going to be pushed uh, way to our left. So let's just keep an eye on the airfield here. Try to keep a good relationship. All right, we're uh, the beam of the numbers right there. Hold that off. I'm thinking uh, we're going to take this almost to the mountain, to the hill here. Those white buildings down there. That's probably going to be a good uh, base to final. Just follow the road. Just want to be just on the inside of it. Let's try this again.
Turn in base. And I'm going to come in a little shallow this time on the final. Struggling to make that turn a little bit with this wind. Yeah, we got 13. I probably should have checked the weather before we went out. So I apologize for my passengers. Breaking all kinds of rules here on squawking 1200. Oh, I got all three. I must have. How did I get all three notches of flaps in? I wonder why I'm going slow on that leg. I, th I thought I put them up on the go around. Maybe I put them down. I'm going to check the video. Second notch of flaps, 65. Pretty good. Bouncing everywhere. Trying to keep this thing lined up is not easy. All right, try to put this thing down. I think we're just gonna uh, try to hold it on the center and then just kick out the crab at the last minute here. Hitting hard. Oh, maybe not. Whew. Here's some advice. Don't take the Cessna 152 out today. Alright, I'm just going to end this video here and then uh, that'll be it for today. Just doing something quick. Just kind of wanted to demonstrate the uh, Nahadrian mod. Got in a little bit over my uh, comfort level with, uh, you know, gusting 15 knot crosswind. Yeah, it's it's seemingly more like, uh, now it's like 8 to 15, 8 to 16 it just popped in there. A little steering on the ground here. And that's excellent. Hey Al Smoking Tea, I just wanted to say thanks for coming by the channel today. I hope everybody's going to enjoy this little bit of demonstration of the Nahadrian mod. This is some of the best money that you can spend on, on X-Plane. I'm going to stow my checklist. Perfect, got that. Fix my flaps. Landing light off. And avionics off, avionics off, idle cutoff, nice. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this quick version of Squawking 1200. Hope you, uh, if you're going to consider a general aviation aircraft or, or um, virtual reality, I would, I would certainly would consider this one and probably put this at one of my you know, put this at near the top of my list. Yeah, some of these gauges are definitely not 3D, especially in comparison to the Just Flight. But for the amount of money that you're going to spend on this aircraft, and for the uh, features that it gives you, the different configurations from super simple um, VFR to a very capable um, fully avionic uh, version. Whew. All right, time to end. Again, thanks again for uh, coming by the channel. I'm going to upload this one up to the uh, YouTube. And uh, hopefully, uh, Adrian um, 
get some good publicity and get some uh, recognition for his hard work and such an amazing improvement on an X-Plane 10 aircraft, bringing this thing into the modern virtual reality age, full walk-around capability, fully moving engine parts, um, it, the ability to uh, adjust the fuel levels at the wings, add, adding um, with cans of gasoline, uh, you know, being able to check the stall warning, uh, light checks, um, having the um, kind of thinking out of the box and having the modifications inside the engine bay. So now you can go in there and, uh, you know, tweak your weights, balances, and uh, configure the interior aircraft with what avionics that you like. Um, I've talked enough for today and just enjoy the video and we'll see you again at the, uh, we'll see you again online.